The protagonist Sam had brain surgery in his youth. This caused him to permanently lose his emotional nerves. He can't feel the common emotions of joy, anger, sorrow, and happiness. But it is this point that made him an outstanding prosecutor. A side effect is intermittent tinnitus accompanied by severe headaches. Time moves to the present. He is on his way to PAB's house. This PAB is the general manager of a construction group. He, being wealthy and powerful, has bought off many high-ranking officials in the prosecutor's office, including Sam. This time he sought out Sam to reveal some information. Sam searched for a long time based on the house number but couldn't find it. By chance, he bumped into an elderly lady passing by. He approached to ask her. Unexpectedly, the old lady looked panicked and turned her head to walk away. It turned out she was PAB's mother. Sam stated he was not a creditor to ease the old lady's worries. As they talked, they arrived at PAB's front door. They rang the doorbell but got no response. The old lady thought her son was asleep. After entering the house, Sam sensed something was wrong. Pots and pans were scattered all over the place. Upon closer inspection, PAB was already lying in a pool of blood. To preserve the scene, Sam sent the old lady outside the door. Then he entered the house alone and locked the door. After making sure there was no one else, he analyzed the wounds of the deceased. There were three stab wounds on the left side. Was it a vendetta? It seems he threatened a person who should not be provoked. Back in the room, Sam discovered that the killer did not bring a weapon and used a knife from PAB's kitchen. While calling the police, he observed the several rooms inside the house. A book is missing from PAB's son's bedroom. Recalling the book on the living room coffee table, he seemed to realize something. Then he went to the living room and turned on the TV. Indeed, the TV was broken. And when I saw PAB's mother before, indeed, I passed a car repairing a TV fault. Sam looked down to search. Sure enough, he found PAB's cell phone. He observed the swipe marks left on the screen. Successfully unlocked the deceased's phone. He dialed the most recent call record. Confirmed it was the cable TV service center. The customer service said the appointment was for 2 o'clock. The repairman had already set off. Sam took a glance at his watch. It is already 2.40 p.m. now. After identifying himself, he requested the repairman's name, address and resume. Upon leaving, he emotionlessly told the old lady that her son had died. There's no helping it. After all, he has no feelings. Meanwhile, Adam from the police station arrived. Sam immediately started to give orders. Let me explain this here. Western District Prosecution Office is the local prosecutorial office. South Korea has a total of five regional prosecutorial offices, East, Southeast, West, North, and Central. As they were discussing, the old lady fainted. Sam also took the opportunity to leave amidst the chaos. But as the person who reported the incident, he should have explained the situation. Adam had Han, who had just arrived, chase after him. On the road, Sam recalled the past. This PAB was introduced by his boss, Jack. That card had no spending limit. It was also at that time given to Sam's hands. But Sam didn't want it. At this point, he received the suspect Ron's resume. At the red light, Han caught up. Sam rolled down the window and identified himself. He then provided the suspect's name and photo. Han immediately became a hundred thousand wise. How are you so sure of the suspect? The green light came on. Sam told her to stop talking nonsense, turn off the siren, and follow him. Getting out of the car. Indeed I found that malfunctioning vehicle. Turning around. I happened to bump into Rom. Without a word. Rom started to run with all his might. It wasn't long before Sam and Han chased him to an underground warehouse. While running, Han cornered Rom onto the second floor rooftop. Unexpectedly, he turned around and leapt down. Han was no pushover. Without a second thought, he also jumped down. Rom still wanted to have a go with Han. Didn't expect to be subdued in one move. Sam also rushed over. He found a stack of money in Rom's pocket. Turns out Rom had stolen jewelry from PAB's house to sell. Then Sam pushed Rom into the car, leaving a bewildered Han behind. Back at the station, Han was also scolded by the team leader. But there's nothing you can do when the prosecutor takes over the case. Han said he would immediately investigate the reason. And at this moment, Adam received a mysterious phone call. Sam pushed Rom back to the office. He immediately called the department head to record a statement. He didn't pay any attention to Viola who was beside them. Viola is a new intern, and also Sam's apprentice. The master has always been like this. Viola is also speechless. Rom inside the room is making a statement. He said the jewelry was found in the yard. He didn't enter the house at all. But who is Sam? He directly took off Rom's shoes. The blood stains on the socks proved he was lying. Rom panicked at this. He said he only stole things because of greed. He found the person already dead when he went in. But Sam said this doesn't make sense. If so, who opened the door for him? Rom said someone did open the door after he rang the bell. At this moment, 
Sam suddenly took out two photos. These two people are respectively the deputy chief prosecutor Zane and Sam's boss Jack. At this moment, the two are conspiring about something in the office. Jack, the subordinate, thought for a moment and then said, the deputy chief indicated not to speak carelessly. Then Jack continued to speak. If it was a robber who committed the murder, then there wouldn't be future troubles. The deputy chief said that the biggest problem now is Sam. He was the first to discover the body and the suspect. There must certainly be some contact between the two of them privately. If PAB does not die, the two of them might be reported by Sam. Jack guesses Sam already knows the secret. The deputy director said he neither confiscated the house nor the car. Is it a mistake just for having a few meals? Through chatting, it is known, Sam is absolutely upright, and both the deputy director and Jack are compromised by PAB. If Sam gets hold of the evidence, both would be done for. Jack wants to take over the case, but the deputy director said this matter should be left to Viola to handle, because dealing with an intern is much easier than with Sam. The focus returns to Sam. Rom talked about his past. Because of a criminal record, he was unwelcome in any job, and he had a wife and kids to support at home. So. He took those jewels. But our Sam has no sense of emotion. He only acknowledges facts and truths. He had his subordinates take Rom to the detention center. This drove Rom insane. He kept repeating over and over that he didn't kill anyone. Meanwhile, Viola received a call from the deputy director. She was promoted. After coming out, Sam heard the news and was completely calm. Upon learning that this case was going to be handed over to Viola, Sam strongly opposed and asked her not to touch the case. Viola ran out angrily, but it was to no avail. At that moment, Jack came over with an insincere attempt at comfort and disclosed some details to Viola. Sam had just left the house when he encountered Adam from the police station. He asked Sam how he found out the TV was broken. Sam mentioned that PAB's room didn't even have half a book. Considering he doesn't like reading, he must have been incredibly bored to go to his son's room to pick up a book to read. In the evening, Sam visited PAB's house again. Based on his memory, the laptop that was on the table was gone. He continued to inspect each room, finally found a car facing the bedroom. He remembered what Rom said. The killer might really be someone else. He found the car owner and identified himself. The owner said the car had been parked here and hadn't moved for several days. Sam checked the taxi's dash cam. He suddenly made a new discovery. Then he accelerated away. Meanwhile, Sam's office was opened. It turned out to be Viola. She was eager to distinguish herself, wanted to understand the specific details of the case. As she was looking, Sam pushed the door and entered. This gave Viola quite a scare. Sam didn't say much. He directly asked her how to win the case, because criminal cases must be decided through court verdicts. Viola said the stolen item had been confirmed as belonging to the victim's mother, and there were bloodstains from the deceased on the socks. The evidence is already quite sufficient, but Sam indicated that Rom indeed received a TV malfunction repair request that day, and he insists he did not commit murder, only stole property. Viola had nothing to say. Sam still produced evidence to help her, which is the dash cam footage from the taxi. It turns out, when Rom rang the doorbell, someone on the second floor opened the curtain to look. This proves Rom was lying, but Sam didn't want to give it to her now, because he doesn't trust anyone. After Viola left, he sent the video to the technical department. Early the next day, Viola came to retrieve the key evidence to prepare for court. Jack came out to teach her how to beautifully fire the first shot. That is to bring out the key evidence at the end of the trial, catching the opponent off guard. On the day of the trial, Sam also arrived at the scene. Just as the two sides were exchanging blows, Jack hurried with the evidence. By the time Rom arrived at the scene, PAB was still alive. This immediately caused a sensation among everyone. Even Rom's lawyer stopped pressing the argument. And so, Rom was sentenced to 22 years. After getting out, Jack was still showing off to Viola. Just then, he ran into Sam. Sam still had an expressionless face. Jack expressed, Is it really that hard to praise one's own apprentice? But Sam didn't want to deal with him and just walked away. Viola also knew who her master was and quickly followed. Sam told her not to start learning these tricks. In the end, she would be the one to lose. Viola stood there feeling very aggrieved. Meanwhile, the criminals were escorted onto four carts. PAB's mother took a stone, wanting to avenge her son. But at this moment, Rom's wife rushed over with their child. The old lady was dazed as she watched the scene unfold. On the other side, Deputy Director Zane called Sam into the office. He asked him for his analysis of the case. Sam said that PAB had used all his connections to prevent bankruptcy, but in the end, it was of no avail. However, he had a reception list in his hand. It recorded the various bribes received by senior officials, and it's very likely that this incident was orchestrated by someone high up in command. Ultimately, 
Framing the unlucky Rom, Zane said you're the one who found the problem, it was also you who convicted Rom. What on earth do you want to do? Then he took out 200 yuan to let Sam sober up. Before leaving, he told Sam, PAB had already called him before. He said he knew about the matter of looking for you. That was just a play. Sam said you don't have to pretend. You know exactly why I was looking for PAB. You're asking me like that on purpose, just out of curiosity about how much I actually know. Right? Are you sure I don't know anything? Seeing Zane not speaking, Sam leaves 100 and turns to leave. It's okay if you don't understand this part. The plot later will explain. On the other side, Han receives a report. It turns out that a resident's small dog was killed and buried. According to the owner's recollection, the puppy disappeared on the day P.A.B. died, and his house is just behind P.A.B.'s. Han climbed over the fence and found bloodstains on it. She collected evidence and took it back to the police station. Adam said he was on the way and could help her with the comparison. Han did not refuse. Meanwhile, Sam received a letter, and after reading it, he hurriedly rushed out. And at this time, on the other side, the suspect had actually committed suicide in jail. Could it be that he was truly wronged? By the time Sam arrived, it was already too late. The prison ruled out the possibility of homicide. Sam felt that things were not so simple. As he left, he happened to encounter Rom's wife. He suspected that Rom's wife was also involved. The letter clearly mentioned suicide, yet his wife did nothing to prevent it. He also delivered this letter to Sam's office. It is very likely that someone offered a high price to bribe Rom into committing suicide, and Rom needed the money to ensure his wife and children's happiness for the rest of their lives. He suspected that Rom's wife had known about it all along. The wife was stricken with overwhelming grief. She felt that Rom's death was extremely unjust. Sam asked her to recall carefully what Rom had said before delivering the letter. The wife indicated that he only wanted to scare you all, and he didn't really want to die. Upon learning Learning the truth, Sam turned and left. He had not far away observing Rom's wife. It didn't seem like she was lying from her state. Walking along, Sam felt something was off again. If Rom committed suicide after taking the money, there would be no need to claim innocence. Wouldn't it be better to admit everything before committing suicide? Why then say the prosecutor fabricated evidence? He arrived at the image analysis room. The tech guy said this was the best restoration they could do. Then he said something that caught Sam's attention. <laughs> Sam was just about to head downstairs, when it happened that he ran into Adam coming out of the gene analysis room. He was about to follow him, when the deputy director called and asked him to come over right now. Because Rom's death had become a trending hot search in the news, such public opinion is very disadvantageous to the prosecutor's office. Sam stated that there was nothing unclean in the entire prosecution process. He also did not fabricate any evidence. The deputy director cursed him out in anger and then turned around to go home. Sam recalled five months ago, I saw PAB down downstairs at an academic seminar. He was talking to a beautiful woman about something. It seemed like he was asking her to accompany someone important. Sam went to the front desk to check in. The hotel had arranged all the officials from the western region to stay on the 10th floor with the best view. When he was taking the elevator, he noticed that the girl was also going to the 10th floor. Not long after, Everyone gathered downstairs. He noticed that the vice minister had sweat marks on his temples. He instantly associated the girl just now with the possibility of her going to Chang's room. Time returns to the present. Sam drives to the police station. He's there to go to the evidence department to gather more clues. Just as he enters, he encounters Han. Han, thinking the case would be reopened for review, followed along. Sam tells him to sort out his own issues first. Then Han leads Sam to the evidence room. Sam discovers that after PAB finished calling him, again a phone call was made to the deputy director. The deputy director indeed said the two had spoken on the phone. It seems he wasn't lying. Then where exactly did the problem occur? The next day, Han asked Adam for the DNA results. Adam said it was the blood of a puppy. Han watched him lie blatantly and didn't say anything. She went to the genetic analysis lab alone. The report showed that the blood was PABs. He clearly died at home. Why would bloodstains appear in such a place? On the other side, Viola held a press conference, indicating that Rom had a precedent of suicide attempts during his early imprisonment. The prosecution did not fabricate or distort the facts. Meanwhile, upon learning the truth, Han found Sam. She thought that Sam had forged the surveillance video. Sam shared his analysis of the case with Han. PAB had bribed many officials with money and women. After declaring bankruptcy, he threatened the authorities with this evidence. That's the reason he was murdered. Sam says Adam also knew some inside information. The day the incident happened, PAB's notebook disappeared. And in the evidence box, 
there was no record at all. It is likely that the top is trying to find out the reception list. And the order was given. Han also handed over the blood test report to Sam. The blood stains on the fence belong to PAB. The two drove to PAB's house. On the road. Sam confirmed that the surveillance footage was forged. Getting out of the car just happened to run into the taxi driver. After asking about the situation, found out the driver had been reported for refusing service, which is why he had been stopped here for the past few days. Was all of this calculated by someone? Three days before the crime, the driver was reported and suspended, and then to time it so that they could frame Rom at the perfect moment. Before that, they even had to cause a television malfunction and forge surveillance videos. Who could calculate so precisely? Sam entered PAB's house and began to deduce. In that case, Rom must have witnessed the murder scene. If the murder didn't take place right after opening the door, but instead, the person was killed before the door was opened, there wouldn't be enough time. That leaves only one possibility. PAB was already dead by the time the doorbell rang. Sam's immersive analysis terrified Han. He shared the results of his analysis with Han. Han suddenly realized this might be a trap set for Sam. Sam said, we're now in the dark despite the light. Nothing can be determined. On the way back, Han holds the test results. Lost in thought, she doesn't know who to report this to. Previously, Sam mentioned that their boss is a good friend of theirs. Sam explained that it is because of Han. Now, letting their guards down, they start to worry again. The person doing this must wish for things to be over quickly. Although there is no perfect crime, but turning a case into an unsolved case is not difficult. Sam asks Han if she will turn a blind eye. Just like Adam, Han said Sam should worry more about himself. Sam said we are all people seeking the truth. In the end, whether it can be thoroughly investigated depends on what kind of person you want to become. After hearing this, Han got out of the car by the roadside. She pondered over Sam's words. Then she made a call to someone. Early the next day, Deputy Director Zane was about to have breakfast, but saw the newspaper on the table. The media unexpectedly revealed Rom has been proven innocent. All major TV stations also pushed this news to the headlines. At the same time, Han and Adam are being scolded in the office. Turns out Han leaked the news to the media without superior approval. Adam was scolded for concealing the blood test report. The two of them argued back and forth nonstop. The team leader Leader, in a fit of anger, told them both to get out of the room. Before leaving, Han wanted to ask something, but he held back, remembering what Sam had said. She walked straight out the door towards Adam, asked him for the laptop in the room that day. Adam hesitated and said it got mixed up with his own computer. Opening the laptop, it was actually an anime-themed desktop. He informed Sam about getting the computer. Sam said it should be his son's computer. The father used it while his son was serving in the military. This was quite reasonable. Han stated that he would send it to the technical department shortly to see if any clues could be found. Put down the phone. Han felt something was wrong. The killer clearly turned the whole house upside down. Why didn't they take the computer away? Could it be that the killer had already looked at it? On the other hand, Viola was surrounded by reporters at the entrance to the prosecutor's office because she was mainly in charge of Rom's case. Seeing this, Sam didn't bother to intervene. It's her own making. If she doesn't listen to Jack's advice, it might not have caused such a big controversy. Zane was also watching everything in the office. Sam just happened to run into Jack. He recognized someone among a bunch of girls. It was the girl from the elevator before. He came to Jack's archive room. Sure enough. He found that girl's information. Just then, Jack came back. Sure enough, this is the information of the girl just now. The deputy director said everything outside is in chaos. You are still causing trouble here. He called Jack to the office. Jack was very angry, saying Sam was challenging their bottom line. He asked the deputy chief to fire Sam. The deputy chief said he wasn't in the mood to talk about that now. Because an internal audit is coming soon. The higher-ups take the issue of falsifying evidence very seriously. If not handled properly. Everyone will be held accountable. Attacking Sam at this time, he will definitely strike back. So the vice director decided to let Viola take the blame. Viola was almost driven mad by public opinion. Her videos were spread everywhere online. At that time, she received a call from her mother. Her father had had an accident. She quickly packed her things and rushed over. At the same time, Sam received a call. The call asked him to go to a Chinese restaurant. After arriving at the Chinese restaurant, the minister told Sam that he was facing an internal investigation. But Sam appeared very calm. The minister was very puzzled. He asked if Sam had nothing to say. Sam indicated that he didn't know anything. Just about to have lunch. The deputy minister called him to go back. Back to the office. The deputy minister also sought him out for discussion due to the internal inspection. Because it was a serious matter. Surely someone would be dismissed. At first. Sam thought it was himself, but the deputy director quickly changed the subject. 
saying they wanted Jack to take the fall and to promote Sam to the head of Criminal Division 3. Because the final piece of evidence presented on the day of the court was brought by Jack. And Jack just happens to be Sam's former mentor. In the end, should it be letting his own disciple take the fall? Or should it be letting his own former mentor take the fall? The deputy director let Sam decide for himself. Then Sam, changing the topic, brought up the girl from the seminar. And then threatened Zane. Zane said that if he was reported, Sam would not be better off. But Sam said it doesn't matter. No matter what. He will investigate to the end. The deputy director was speechless. This was unexpected to Sam, but it was not a disadvantage for him. On the contrary, it could gather more information. Sam didn't say anything and turned to leave. This made Zane very angry, not knowing if it was because of the threat or some other reason. After getting off work, Sam encountered Viola drinking sullenly, recalling that Viola had received a phone call earlier during the day. It seemed something had happened to her father. Sam glanced at the file in his hand. About to leave, Viola is a sensible person, she realized that the higher-ups wanted her to take the fall. Viola's father was also once a high-ranking official, but ever since the incident, he has been hospitalized. His mood is very unstable, she didn't dare to tell her father about her own admission to the Western District's procuratorate, because father hates Zane the most. Now, as a prosecutor, she has to support a family of three. She cannot afford to lose this job. But Sam has no sense of emotion. He did not pay attention to Viola getting up and leaving. Sam looked at her thoughtfully. Returning home, Sam remembered everyone related to the case, as well as the words spoken by the deputy director, the minister, and Viola. He made a bold decision. The next day, Sam went to the studio. He decided to publicly explain the case. During the interview, Sam stated that he is the prosecutor mentioned in Rom's will. Viola, responsible for the public trial, was just assisting, and Viola's family was watching this live broadcast in the hospital. Sam continued, when Rom arrived at the scene of the crime, there indeed was someone on the second floor. This was inconsistent with what Rom had said. That's why he was found guilty. Then Sam released the video of that day. But Rom didn't lie. The blood of the deceased was found far from where Rom was. So, the person who appeared on the second floor is the murderer. Upon this revelation, there was an uproar at the scene. Sam confirmed that the evidence was fabricated. This was his negligence. Zane was also watching the news. He was dumbfounded by anger. Sam stated that he would catch the suspect within two months. If I fail, I will resign and take responsibility. Everyone heard and started applauding, but some people were not so happy. The next morning, the minister rushed to Sam's office, but his subordinates reported that Sam hadn't come to work yet. Han also noticed that Sam was trending online. The internet's opinions on this matter were mixed. The minister's call was hung up by him. He approached Han wanting to know the whereabouts of PAB's mother. Han said that he would also go help. The section chief saw the two of them as they were leaving. He sneered without saying a word. On the road, Han felt an inexplicable trust towards this person. Who dares to tell the truth in front of the media? Sam then told him about a real case that happened. Several years ago, at the Qingzhou local prosecutor's office, both the chief prosecutor and the minister of justice were internally reported, and with the charges established, both were removed from their positions. But after the storm had passed, both parties filed lawsuits at the same time. In the end, they received a judgment to cancel the dismissal. The chief prosecutor was reinstated to the training institute and worked there until retirement. The minister of justice opened a law firm and is still living a fulfilling life to this date. This is the reality. Han mentioned that his seniors also had similar experiences. It's no longer surprising. As they talked, they arrived at a sauna. It turned out that PAB's mother worked there. During the inquiry, the old lady mentioned a key piece of information. The day before the incident, PAB had a quarrel over a phone call. According to memories, it didn't seem like it was about debt collection. Then PAB went out, but returned after a while. Han immediately asked colleagues to investigate the call. While Sam felt something was off about the old lady, Sam thought PAB's mother was afraid of being implicated by debts. And according to Sam's investigation, on the day of the incident, the old lady did not go to her brother's house for the banquet. The old lady said that day she went to help with someone else's banquet. Han found Sam's attitude puzzling. Could the old lady who could hardly walk steadily be capable of killing her own son? Sam stated that the probability of relatives committing murder had increased by 43% in the past 20 years. Incidents of domestic violence had increased by 1,300%. Not everyone would grieve the death of a family member. Hans still disagreed. She decided to investigate in her own way. She invited the old lady to her home under the pretense of wanting to eat home-cooked food. 
and gave the old lady the keys to her house. Sam finally returned to the prosecutor's office. The minister called him over and immediately started scolding him, but Sam's attitude was very good. No matter what the minister said, he kept apologizing. The minister became even angrier, ordered him to write a self-criticism on the spot. Right after leaving the minister's office, he was called to the deputy minister's office. There was no choice. After all, he brought this trouble upon himself. He waited all morning, but the deputy minister didn't see him, but had his secretary tell him to come back in the afternoon, return to his own office. The masses sent many flowers to encourage Sam, but Sam's focus was on the files on the ground. His subordinate explained that it was a sign from the vacationing neighbor. Isn't this obviously making things difficult for someone? It was already past noon. Sam hadn't received a notice to eat. He went to a nearby restaurant and happened to encounter the minister and Jack among others. Viola looked at the single Sam with mixed feelings, but Sam didn't care. As long long as he is not embarrassed. It's the others who feel awkward. He leisurely sipped his soup, without paying any attention to others. After the meal, Viola waited for Sam at the coffee machine. It turned out she hadn't sent Sam the dining notification. Obviously, this was what the minister had instructed her to do. Having been in the bureaucracy for so many years, Sam naturally understood. He advised Viola it's best not to get too close to him. Viola thanked Sam for clarifying things on TV and casually mentioned that it was her dad who interviewed Sam back then. Now you understand why Sam was isolated. While talking, Han called. That call made to PAB actually came from the prosecutor's office. Sam quickly rushed to the petition's office. Viola followed too. Looking up, they noticed the surveillance camera was pointing right at this phone. Two people arrived at the surveillance room. In principle, Video data must be preserved for 60 days, but the petitions department has always been very peaceful, so the staff only kept it for 15 days. Another lead has gone cold. Sam sat in the car, watching the dashcam footage from the day before the incident. When PAB came back, he casually threw in a coffee with a rabbit logo. He left at 2316 and returned home at 048. The round trip took 32 minutes, so a one-way trip is 16 minutes. Sam drives to the front of PAB's house, opens the stopwatch and simulates the route PAB might have taken, then searches for nearby coffee shops. Sam keeps asking around while searching, finally finds the coffee shop with the rabbit logo. The owner says the surveillance video in the shop is only kept for 15 days, but he can help look for the intern who was working part time that day. While waiting, Sam starts to imagine the scene again. Who exactly is this person? On the other side, Deputy Director Zane is getting scolded by his father-in-law. Father-in-law fan seems to be a person of high status and influence. He's looking at the news about Sam, saying if Zane had that kind of astuteness, he would have made his way into the blue house already. Zane can only stand by, apologizing. Fan says since the gauntlet has been thrown, let's see who he can catch. Sam is very smart. At this critical juncture, no one dares to touch him. There's not no way. You can find a scapegoat. Guide Sam into investigating. Eventually, make that person commit suicide. Even if it is discovered that the scapegoat is not the real culprit, it doesn't matter. For him, Sam, to go on TV again and admit he was wrong is unlikely. Once is still okay. A second time, public opinion would completely submerge him. Zane says he'll handle this. Fan states that there must not be any mistakes this time. Subsequently, Viola's father Venus was mentioned. Is there any grudge between them? The scene shifts. Viola is in the hospital chatting with her father. Zane suddenly appears at the door. He looks at Venus and recalls the past. Himself holding flowers to celebrate Venus becoming the Minister of Justice. But now it has turned into this state. He bowed and then left. Viola saw Zane, but she didn't chase after him because she knew her father particularly hated this person. The scene shifts. Zane and the chief of police are drinking. He says that Sam can't be reasoned with and that he doesn't play by the rules. The chief says that everyone has a weakness. Previously, he had seen Sam working on a case with a female detective from their unit. Zane found it surprising. Sam has always been fighting alone. Sam here received a call from the cafe. The person for the part time job that evening was found. They agreed to meet the following morning. Not long after, Viola called again. She urged Sam to quickly turn on the TV. It turns out someone leaked that Sam often attacked others during student days and was consequently persuaded to leave. The whistleblower claimed to be Sam's classmate. A person with anger management issues transformed, became a national idol who upholds justice. Is this matter not absurd? 
The show crew even went to Sam's house, but Sam's father refused to open the door. Sam turned off the TV to look for his mother. He told his mother to say she doesn't recognize him if anyone comes looking. Before leaving, his mother asked about the whereabouts of his father, but Sam didn't know either. Turns out his parents had long been divorced, and his mother had already started a new family. Returning home. Sam felt extremely tired. Everything weighed down on him. He got up to grab some water from the fridge. Suddenly, the after effects struck. He knelt down in pain, gradually losing consciousness. Han returned home and lay there, recalling the words spoken on TV. From her understanding of Sam, Sam couldn't possibly be that kind of person. At this moment, a figure appeared. It turned out to be P.A.B.'s mom. She forgot to give the keys to the old lady during the day. Han took out a bottle of wine, ready to eat and chat with the old lady. On the other side, someone is exposing Sam's affairs online. He is indeed Sam's classmate. They even spoke at Viola's debate meeting before. But what is his purpose in doing so? The next day Sam came to work as usual. People around him were all pointing fingers at him. Inside the deputy director's office, Jack said with schadenfreude about Sam's situation. He wanted to take the opportunity to kick Sam out of the prosecutor team. But Zane said that this matter needs to be handled with care. Doing it wrong might even score points for Sam. What the public most wants to see is a gangster passing the prosecutor exam, a problem child becoming a judge. Such an inspirational reversal experience. Jack was dumbfounded, not knowing what the deputy chief really wanted to do. Zane changed the topic, asking him how the special control investigation in the red light district was going, and he indicated that he's going to take over personally. Just then, Sam pushed the door open. The deputy director asked why you're so calm. Sam admitted that he had undergone surgery. The deputy director didn't respond to him. Ask Sam directly what kind of authority he needs. Sam says, hasn't he mentioned it already? He just wants to be the head this time. When the internal inspection comes, pushing Jack out will solve everything. Zane says he will cancel the internal inspection. Sam doesn't understand why the deputy director would cut off his own right arm. Zane says that whether it's his left arm or right arm, he can regrow it. Sam says forget about it. Isn't it just because Jack has something on you? That's why you want to use me to get rid of him? Zane tells him to focus on investigating his own case and stop thinking about useless things. After Sam comes out, he finds Jack angrily walking out of the meeting room. Sam enters the meeting room. It turns out that the deputy director's office is right next door. He heard the entire conversation between the two just now. Jack went back to the room, took out the photo of that girl, and slipped it into his pocket. This was the only thing that could save his life. Sam came to the cafe. He showed the intern the photos of Zane and Jack, but the intern said it wasn't them. So who did PAB actually meet? The intern took the phone and browsed through the photos, finally confirming the person who met with PAB that night. The last person to see PAB turned out to be Viola. What exactly did they say? Does she have a direct connection with the murderer? Sam came to PAB's house again, measured the position of the second floor window with a ruler. He wanted to judge based on height if this person was Viola. On the other side, the team leader walked out of the chief's office, looking disheveled. It seemed like he had received some sort of order, and he didn't understand why. Soon after, the police station received a report of child sexual abuse. Everyone immediately mobilized urgently. After a chase by the crowd, the suspect was captured and brought to justice. Han also suffered minor injuries. The team leader chatted with Han in the car. He learned about Han and Sam working on the case together. The leader stated that intelligence should be shared in the future. Han remembered Sam had once said, the person behind the case should be someone high up. She pondered but didn't speak. Viola got off the car. The team leader then dialed the director's number. Meanwhile, Zane also received a call from the director. It turns out he wanted to monitor every move of Sam. Hanging up the phone, Zane continued to chat with the minister. He said that the attorney general thought it unnecessary to conduct an internal investigation, saying it's not too late to wait until Sam doesn't find the real culprit after two months. The minister has a particular dislike for Sam. But there's nothing he could do when the deputy minister uses the attorney general to pressure him. After the minister left, Zane saw a piece of breaking news exposing Sam. Sam's subordinates are also reading this news in the office. That person, Zayo, is indeed the classmate Sam mentioned in the previous episode. In the text, he says he is the one whose finger was broken by Sam. It is precisely because of this that he was not ostracized. Before this incident, all the other classmates were bullying him. Only Sam did not take part. He is convinced that Sam is a good person. Meanwhile, Sam's thoughts are all on Viola. Time goes back to three years ago. Viola's father was reported for accepting bribes amounting to 800 million yuan. The one who arrested him was the minister he personally nurtured. At the time, Sam was also present. Where was Viola on the day PAB was killed? 
As they were discussing, Viola pushed the door open. She handed over the organized documents to Sam. Sam noticed her shoes. The heels actually had mud on them. Later, Sam came to visit Viola's father. After exchanging pleasantries, afterwards, Viola's mother expressed her gratitude for Sam going on TV to clarify things. Sam changed the subject, asking Venus what she thought about the case. Venus said that she wasn't very clear about the details of the case. Then Sam added, This case is a bit different from others. The victim had a very close relationship with some of our high-level people, that is. The person who was about to become the chief prosecutor. We're talking about Deputy Chief Zane here. Venus was very displeased after hearing this. Gently issued an order to leave. Venus's wife followed out. She thought Sam liked Viola. Blurted everything out without thinking. Sam learned that Viola's boyfriend is named Aja. He used to go to Viola's house to fix computers often. Has a plump figure. And is a mama's boy. Sam turned around and left after getting the information. Through this contact, Sam discovered that Venus had long known who had pulled the rug from under him. As as well as where the 800 million grand sum originated. But why didn't he speak up? It's very likely that PAB provided the cash in place of Zane's father-in-law. He must have been aware early on. The person who framed him involved everyone. If Venus did not take a bribe, shouldn't he clarify everything? Venus wasn't surprised when he heard himself mentioned alongside Zane. This suggests that Viola had discussed it with him earlier. How did Viola come to know about it? Three years ago, she was just an examinee. How did she learn that her father collapsed due to PAB's funding? Did the father and daughter team up to do other things as well? Meanwhile, Viola also received a call from her father. Sam might be investigating her secretly. Jack found all the local pimps on this side, telling them to identify the woman in the photograph. Whoever finds her first gets to open for business first. Sam returned to the office and found Han asleep on the sofa. He woke Han up and asked her if she had a boyfriend. Han seemed to have overthought it. Sam continued to say, If someone destroyed your family, would you encourage your boyfriend to kill that person? Han said not only would she not encourage him, but she would also stop her boyfriend from doing something foolish. If such a day ever came, she would take matters into her own hands. Later, Han mentioned the broken TV set at PAB's house. Just pull out the card on top of the set-top box. Then plug it back in and it'll be fine. She went to PAB's house before coming here. Found no fingerprints on the card, which is very strange. At least the fingerprints of the manufacturer and the installer should be there, so someone must have tampered with it. And PAB usually sleeps during the day. It seems the culprit is particularly familiar with PAB's daily routine, and the only place to hide in the entire house was this cloakroom, but there was no clue left inside. Such precise calculation, and knowing that Rom has a criminal record, the murderer is either in the prosecutor's office or inside the police station, but there's something that doesn't make sense. If it was just to eliminate PAB, there was no need to go to such lengths. Han said that the person in charge must have regretted it. When seeing Rom shouting about his grievances everywhere, Sam then said, <laughs> Underlings enter the house to find Sam for a meeting. On the way, Han is still guessing, is it about a woman? The petition's office? Everyone arrives to gather in the meeting room. Viola sits here, recalling the recent conversation between the two. Could it be because of this that one visited one's own father? Have I also become a suspect? The meeting officially begins. Zane slowly steps up to the podium, because the recent turmoil outside has had a great impact on the prosecutor's office. As the second in command, he had to hold such a press conference. Firstly, to show the public the attitude of the prosecutor's office. Secondly, to boost morale. Clearly, this was for the media. He spoke passionately, with words that lifted spirits. At this moment, Jack received a phone call. The bar girl mentioned in the previous episode was found. Sam also noticed his unusual behavior. Just as Zane was leading everyone in taking an oath, Jack slipped away. Seeing this, Sam also followed out. The two drove one after the other into the night. Suddenly a large vehicle cut in, causing Sam to lose sight of the target. Sam followed the rough route in pursuit. After a while, he spotted Jack's men. Then he must be nearby. Jack entered a small bar. He asked the supervisor to quickly bring Lily over. The supervisor went out and called Lily, and she was on her way. Sam happened to see her in the car. He had seen this girl before. Sam quietly followed. At that moment, Jack suddenly grabbed the phone. Lily, seeing that something was wrong, turned her head and ran. Jack also chased out like crazy, so much so that he ran into Sam's car without noticing Sam. Lily hailed a car and fled. Jack angrily asked everyone for Lily's address. If he couldn't get an answer, then he would suspend business for reorganization. Sam, eavesdropping nearby, learned the girl's name was Lily. After coming out, 
he coincidentally bumped into a girl who just started work. Sam asked her to hail an unlicensed taxi for him. Because these taxis specialize in driving these girls to and from work, Sam got in the car and asked for Lily's address. The driver didn't know he was a prosecutor and even wanted to gesticulate with Sam. That's how Sam smoothly got Lily's address. Meanwhile, Lily had already arrived home and started to pack her things. Suddenly, there was a knock on the door. She changed her clothes and ran out. Not long after, Sam also hurried over, knocking on the door. There was no response. He came out to survey the surroundings, noticed a basement window was open. He turned on a flashlight and drilled his way in. Judging by the red clothes on the bed, this is Lily's room. Sam checked her wardrobe and found out she was actually a high school student. If Lily is a minor, then Zane's actions will be considered even more serious. Is this the leverage PAB has in his hands? Sam took a picture of the school uniform. He went back to the car and took out the business card the driver gave him and dialed Lily's number. Is it so noisy because she's at a party? On the other end, Zane is in the car watching the news. The internet is full of praise for his recent speech. This is exactly what he wanted to see. Just then, the director called. According to Han's report, they knew that the last person PAB saw was a woman, but they weren't sure who it was. Zane said not to talk about it on the phone. Let's meet at the usual place. The two arrived at the agreed location. Zane looked pale, raised his pinky finger and started drinking. The director guesses that Viola and PAB met. But three years ago she was just a kid who knew nothing. Did her dad tell her? The director wants to hear some truths. He asks Zane what the deal was with the 800 million from before. Zane says that when Venus knew it was money inside, she backed out. But that afternoon someone returned the money, yet he did not know which side the person who returned the money the second time was on. The director says it's a pity. If Venus really didn't take a penny, still have to endure such humiliation in front of the whole country. If he were Viola, he would certainly have murderous intent. No matter how to resolve it, he urges Zane to speed up. Zane, however, states Viola cannot be caught. This is also the intention of his father-in-law. If Viola is caught, then everyone related to PAB will be implicated. At that point, things will become uncontrollable, so we can only proceed as we did before. Manufacturing area manually leaking evidence. After letting Sam notice, then force the scapegoat to commit suicide. Zane sits in the car without saying a word. What is he planning to do? On the other hand, Sam meets an old classmate on his way home, the one who defended him online. But Sam doesn't drink, and he lacks emotional sensitivity. This made the old classmate very unhappy. He said Sam didn't deserve to have friends. The two chatted a few words and parted unhappily. Everyone only saw Sam's indifference, but they didn't know that he had been emotionless since childhood. Fortunately, Sam couldn't feel sadness either. He went home and compared photos, trying to figure out which school Lily was in through the logo. Viola's father was discharged from the hospital and returned home. Han also got along very well with the old lady. Early the next morning, Sam packed his files ready for court. He printed that photo intending to have his subordinates investigate. But stepping out, he found that Jack was bribing his man. He could only pocket the photo again. Just as he left the prosecutor's office, he bumped into an old classmate. His daily trips to the prosecutor's office were in search of something to do. Because he specialized in law. And currently, the law firm's caseload was not that large. So he and his colleagues took on Rom's defense. I had thought it was a sure win. But unexpectedly, I ended up losing in the end. He left a phone number for Sam. Saying to reach out to him anytime if help is needed. The scene switches. There's a faint light in PAB's home. Turns out it's a few kids drinking and partying here. One of the girls had too much to drink and wanted to go to the bathroom. She was scared stiff as soon as she opened the door. In the haunted house where a murder occurred a few months ago. Another dead body has been discovered. A group of high school students did not report immediately after discovering something. Instead, they chose to upload it to their moments. This, in turn, caused an even bigger impact. As they were saying this, the children were brought out. The media went crazy taking photos. There were more reporters at the scene than staff. Sam rushed to the scene as soon as he got the message. Trouble followed trouble. It hasn't been long since he made a promise on TV for two months. A new murder has occurred. Are these two incidents really connected? After Sam arrived, 
He found Han was already in position, he began to imagine the crime scene. There were no bloodstains on the wall. This suggests the murderer stabbed Lily while crouching down. Suddenly, Lily coughed. It turns out she wasn't dead. Adam and others quickly carried Lily out, while Sam was still following the murderer's train of thought. He looked down at the weapon on the ground. It was the same one used to kill P.A.B. What exactly does the murderer want to convey? After Lily was lifted onto the ambulance, Han quickly called for backup, because the scene was swarming with reporters. It wouldn't be long before the murderer knew Lily was still alive. Adam sought out Sam for an update. Sam explained, Lily is a hostess at a karaoke bar. She almost got caught in last night's raid. By the time they found her address, she had already fled. Adam prays she's not dead, because she is the only one who has seen the murderer. Han and others rushed Lily to the emergency room. The doctor said he could only do his best. That's when the team leader arrived. He said Sam and Adam were on their way to Lily's home. Jack, eavesdropping nearby, furrowed his brow. He most didn't want Sam to get involved. After hearing this, Han also rushed over immediately. On the other side, Zane also saw the news at home. He looked at the photo flashing on the screen. Is this woman really related to him? Just then, his wife pushed open the door. The state of the couple was very strange. Is he afraid his wife will discover his affair? Meanwhile, Sam and Adam arrived at Lily's home. Other than some items commonly used by girls, they found nothing unusual. Sam had been here before, so he purposefully let his uniform peek out for Adam to see. Adam also realized the seriousness of this matter. Upon arrival, Han found Sam crouching nearby. It turns out, he found the manicure Lily dropped when she was kidnapped, meaning she encountered trouble just after leaving her house. Sam believes all of this was planned, from the laptop left behind, blood stains deliberately smeared on, and the dog buried in the neighbor's yard. Is someone deliberately making Sam see these things? Why is it always one step ahead of Sam? Han also starts to analyze. If someone always commits the crime before you, Sam, Either they have a grudge against you, or they want to frame you. Han's intelligence just came online and she starts to wildly speculate. She thinks that P.A.B. entertained Sam with Lily. After Lily's boyfriend found out, he dealt a deadly blow. Sam was speechless listening on the side. He pulled out the photo of the school uniform. It was recorded that Lily was indeed a minor. For some people, this is like a walking time bomb. But Han said if they wanted to shut her up, they should deal with it quietly. Why make it known to everyone? Instead, they tied her up at the previous crime scene. That's exactly what Sam couldn't figure out. Inside the police station, everyone was working nervously. The previous case had not yet been solved. This time, a new situation has emerged. This puts Fang in a very passive position. The bureau starts to take massive action, testing what needs to be tested, interrogating those who need to be interrogated. The prosecutor's office also held an emergency meeting. The minister stated that Jack would handle this case, because Rom's family wants to sue Sam. Sam didn't say much. This does not hinder his continued investigation. Jack came to the police station to gather intelligence. The police used the ID card information to find Lily's parents, but the elderly couple stated they did not recognize Lily in the photo. This indicates that someone has stolen the name Lily. Back at the prosecutor's office, Sam saw Jack go to the deputy director's office to report, and decided to sneak into the adjacent meeting room to eavesdrop. Zane was very angry, it had always been very calm. So why did new violent incidents happen as soon as Jack made a move? Jack said you can't ask me about this. I'm also very confused. Zane asked if there were any new findings on the day he was tracking. Jack indicated that it must have been Sam who was tracking him that day, because it was he who told Fine Lily's address. Jack also thought it was very strange. This can't be a coincidence. Starting from PAB's death, all cases were one step ahead of Sam. Zane said you couldn't even find Lily's home yourself. How could he have found out early? Jack thought to himself, aren't you praising Sam? Then he started to beat around the bush, the previous PAB and this time's Lily. Obviously, they were targeting you, Zane. Zane expressed that he didn't understand the murderer's motive. Aren't you going to cut off the right-hand man? That I also have my suspicions about you. After saying that, Jack left. He wanted to test whether the whole incident was Zane's doing, but Zane remained calm. Sam recalled their recent conversation in the meeting room. Could the killer have been following him all along? <laughs> But the timeline doesn't add up. From discovering Lily to learning her address took Sam 46 minutes. That means the killer would arrive around 40 minutes after Lily. Even for a woman, getting ready wouldn't take that long. Moreover, 
the crime scene was no more than 20 meters from the house. This indicates the killer was waiting there in advance. Arriving 40 minutes late is impossible. It must be through other means. This also rules out the possibility that the killer knew Lily. Then there was no need for him to use a stun gun. He could have simply taken Lily away before striking. So the killer must have known in advance where Lily was going, where she lived. The two bizarre bleeding incidents are both somehow related to the prosecutor's office. Sam went to the surveillance room to check the footage from two days ago, which was the day Zane held a press conference. Sam wanted to see who had gone out. Presently, a total of four people are aware of the matter concerning Lily, Jack and his investigative officers, the deputy chief who received the report, as well as Sam himself. Wait! No! There's also a fifth person. This person is Viola. On the day of the press conference, she secretly observed the actions of these people, but Sam was unaware. He felt that this person must have some kind of connection with the murderer. The results of the fingerprint identification from the police station have been released. From Adam's expression, it seems like they know the person. At this moment, Adam received a phone call. The person on the call was stammering, saying they saw the murderer. Not long after, Zane received a call from the chief. It turns out Zane's father-in-law had called the chief. The chief also shared the information Adam had learned with Zane. Zane obviously seemed a bit at a loss. He kicked open the door to Sam's office with one foot. With a look, he called him into a private room. It turns out Sam's fingerprints were on the murder weapon. The victim's home was also full of traces left by Sam's investigation. And the call that Adam received was from a witness pointing the finger at Sam. Yet Sam countered by saying, <laughs> Sam followed this thread further guessing, last October, PAB sent the underage Lily to Zane's room, because later she didn't meet his demands, so PAB wanted to expose Zane, unexpectedly. You Zane silenced him forever. Sam wants to know the truth. Zane said the day Lily indeed appeared at his door, but he didn't make a mistake, because he knew it was a trap. Then he said a bunch of things about fairness and justice, not knowing if it was for Sam or for himself. Sam said, is this meant to break Sam's defenses? Just then someone knocked on the door. It turned out to be Adam looking for Sam to inquire about the situation. Sam admitted that he had touched the murder weapon 10 days ago. At that time, it was to confirm whether Ron's statement was true. So the situation at the time of the crime was reenacted at the scene. Adam stated that only your fingerprints were on the murder weapon. What are you pretending for? and someone has already reported you as the murderer. But Sam guessed who it was. It's the taxi driver who gave him Lily's address. Zane understood that this was Jack's doing. Adam was very angry that he was to be questioned. They found out Sam had visited Lily's house in advance. Subsequently, in order to hide the traces left behind, I called Adam to go again. Fingerprints, eyewitnesses, and the last person who saw the victim was right in front of us. What would you do if you were in my shoes? Sam? Sam says he has already explained everything he needs to explain. At this point, the deputy chief speaks up. The deputy chief is still protective of his subordinate. Adam mutters to himself as he prepares to leave. Jack also entered the elevator. 그러니까, 